Yes, God, thank you, Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day that you have given us a lot. Thank you, Lord, for this time that we have gathered over here to spend with your word. Lord, as we have gathered over here today, it is you, O Lord, who is teaching us your truth, O Lord. It is you who is teaching us the secrets and the mysteries, Lord. As today we have heard your word, Lord, you continue to reveal to us more and more secrets of your kingdom, making this word extremely simple and easy to grasp on and to understand. Lord Jesus, thank you, Holy Spirit, for your love and for your mercy that endures forever and ever. And Lord, as we have gathered over here today to hear your word, it is by your spirit, O oh Lord, and through your power and with your anointing, we are hearing your word. And also, Lord, we are able to apply the same word in our lives also. Lord, it is your word that is setting us free. And because, O oh Lord, it is your word, it is through your word today, O oh Lord, we are able to experience your will and your purpose in our life. Thank you, Lord, for this word that you have given to us. And Lord, because of the word that you have given to us, every situation turns to good. Every sickness turns to healing. Every bondage turns to freedom. Every fear turns to dependency on you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, help us, O oh Lord, to be dependent on you, to trust in you, O oh Lord. Because, Lord, those who trust in you will lack no good thing. Those who trust in the Lord, those who seek the Lord, lack no good thing, O oh Lord. And, Lord, as we make this decision to trust you and to keep our focus on you, Lord, we believe that whatever we are studying today, O oh Lord, this time is not gone waste. But this time is benefiting us. It is helping us be a big blessing to a lot of people. This time is helping us, O oh Lord, to keep our focus and our attention on you, to focus on what your word says, and to keep our focus on you, O oh Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this uh, time, Lord, that we have spent with your word. And Lord, as we have heard your word, Lord, we believe this word also is working in our life, and it is changing our life completely, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, our Father. Amen. 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 And amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay. Praise God. Praise God. So thank you, Jesus. Um, praise you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. So um, in the last uh, few classes, we have been seeing on how uh, those who trust in the Lord lack no good thing. And we were seeing on how when we start trusting in the Lord and we start believing in God's word, okay, is when we will be able to see, okay, God's will in our life. Praise God. So, um, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Okay, let's go to Psalms. Uh, let's go back to that scripture which we were seeing, Psalms. Yes, God. 34, verse number 10. Yes, God. Okay, see that. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but those who trust or those that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Praise God. So today, as the word of God has been given to us, and as today we are believing in Jesus Christ, and as today we have accepted Jesus as our Lord and as our God and as our Savior, okay, the, he's saying those who trust in the Lord, they will not want any good thing. So as today we have believed the scriptures and we have believed the word of God and as today we have believed the truth, okay, today we are able to see, okay, the manifestation of the kingdom of God because we have made that decision to see the word. Now, when I say see the word means, okay, today as we have received, as we have received the word of God, 
and as today we have received the truth okay with our within our hearts as we have seen this word now the next step is when we start trusting this word when we start seeking when we start trusting the word of god we shall not want any good thing now we need to learn how to prepare our heart to seek god and to seek his word praise god and the reason i'm saying this is because many a times we come and we 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 hear his word we come and we listen to what the bible says we come and listen to what the scripture says but we don't experience it now the reason why we don't experience it is not because the power is not being given to us it is because we are not able to 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 apply that word in our life because the only way to apply this word in our life is by his strength now the reason why we don't see his power is because yes we have received the word of god and yes we have received the truth but the next question is are we going to spend time to make that word the first priority of our life and if we are not making this word the first priority of our life if this word is not getting that first place in our life then that means something is wrong and what is wrong we have not still understood the nature of god because the nature of god is that he is willing to work in our life but when we are looking at ourselves and our ability as right we are not giving him the strength but we are using the strength by our own power we think that the situation will uh, the, the answer of the word of god will work when we do it with our strength but no matter what we try to do with our strength it will not work we will try we will try we will get tired of working with our strength but we are never supposed to try to do something with my strength instead we are supposed to do whatever we need to do with the word of god praise the lord so now as we have okay uh, we have received the word of god and as today the word has become the first priority of uh, our life as the word of god has become the first priority of our life now the word is the first priority yes but the next thing is they that seek the lord shall not want any good thing now seeking the lord is not only just keeping the word in our heart but seeking the word is making that word the first priority and now where that word starts applying in your life no 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 see when he is saying this but they that seek the lord shall not want any good thing no matter what we are going through the more we start seeking god and seeking his word everything else will be added unto us that's what happened to paul you see let's see that scripture um acts chapter 16 you see um praise god verse number let's see that um okay uh, verse number 15 okay press card uh 16 16 okay we'll read from 16 and we'll read it from the new living translation praise the lord thank you jesus okay see that press card okay um thank you jesus see that scripture one day as we were going down to the place of prayer now paul is paul is saying this, okay paul and silas are saying this one day as we were going down to the place of prayer we met a slave girl who had a spirit that enabled her to tell the future she earned a lot of ma- money for her masters by telling fortunes she followed paul and the rest of her shouting these men our servants of the most high god and they have come to tell you how to be saved this went on day after day until paul got so exasperated that he returned and said to the demon within her i command you in the name of jesus christ to come out of her and instantly it left her her master's hopes of wealth 
were now shattered. So they grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged them before the authorities at the marketplace. The whole city is in an uproar because of these Jews. They shouted to the city officials. Means the whole city is like um, fired up because of these two people, these two Jews. And they shouted this to the city officials. They are teaching customs that are illegal for us Romans to practice. A mob quickly formed against Paul and Silas and the city officials ordered them to and stripped and beaten with wooden rods. They were severely beaten and they were thrown into prison. Okay. The jailer was ordered to make sure they didn't escape. So the jailer put them into the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in the stocks. Now here, a situation raised against them where just because they did what God told them to do, just because they were faithful enough to do what God told them to do, okay, here, the people, uh, the, 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 the money makers from this girl who, who is to make money, okay, uh, out of this girl making a girl telling fortune, te uh, for out of fortune telling, of this girl telling fortunes, out of that, they used to make their money. And now all that money which they were making and that hope to become a, a hope, okay, they were hoping, in other words, they were hoping, they were expecting big things to happen. Maybe they were expecting to become the richest or to become millionaires or whatever it could be. They were having a hope because everything is going so good. They're getting the money they need and it looks like they will have enough, okay. And now suddenly all their hopes of wealth Okay, all their dreams of wealth were all shattered. They were all broken to pieces. Okay, that's what happens many a times with us also. When a situation rises, for so long it looked like everything was good. And now a situation rises. And soon, okay, uh, our hope gets shattered. I don't know whether you heard it, but uh, have you ever heard the doctor saying no hope? Yeah, when the doctors are saying no hope, in other words, praise God. Now, when the doctors are saying no hope, that means in other words, they're saying we cannot expect anything to happen, which is right. We, we, we are not able to expect anything good to happen. Only the bad will happen. That's why the hope gets shattered. See, see for example, a person is coming to the doctor and the doctor is saying you have cancer. And you will die in three days. What is that? The person's hope gets shattered. The person's hope gets shattered. Why? Because of the bad news. These people, their hope was shattered because of the bad news. Okay, many a times don't we get angry at God and we start saying to the Lord, Lord, why did you send this problem? Lord, I was hoping, I was expecting this to happen and everything was so good. Why did you send this problem a lot? Don't we ask that question? Yeah. But is it God who is bringing the problem? No. No. In, you see, uh, there was this, you know, self-centeredness. There is this self-centeredness in us. What is the self-centeredness? To look at my benefit, not others' benefit. These money makers were looking at their benefit of getting more money and not looking at the benefit of uh, this uh, girl, the fortune telling spirit is out of her. So, so, so she will go to heaven, not to hell. They were not looking at her benefit or her good. If Paul would have not done, Paul and Silas would have not done what they did, they would have, that, that, that girl, if she had not heard the word, she would go to hell. See, many of them, that's the attitude of us. To care about ourselves, not about others. But never ever focus on that. To care about yourselves, ourselves, and not others. 
that's pride and pride will never lead you to anything good it will only lead you to bad so here when they are saying the lord did this to us was it actually the lord who did it to them lord why did you shatter my hope everything was going good was it the lord who brought that uh, uh, that um, problem to break their ho hope into pieces no it was their own it was their own pride it was their own self many a times it is because of our own self a situation arises and something bad happens and then who do we blame god we blame god and we think it is god who's the problem god is not the problem we are the problem i'll say that again god is not the problem we are the problem and what is the problem in us the problem in us is that we are looking at ourselves not the way the world says but the way we think is right and that 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 is what it means self centeredness what is self centeredness looking at myself as right and looking at others as wrong looking at me and my benefit and not looking at others god is not a god who thinks about himself he always thinks about others and then the bible says those who trust in the lord those who seek the lord lack no good thing he is speaking about those who are not self centered but those who start focusing on god god is not saying those who are see if if a person is doing this if a person is saying those who trust in the lord lack no good thing so he is studying the word of god he is seeking the lord just to receive something from god that self centeredness again he will not receive but those who are actually spending the time not to receive something but because they want to know him because they want to understand him because they want to get a deeper revelation of him and those people who are spending the time to seek the lord god will not let them down god will not easily let them down praise god so the more so the more i start seeking the lord not thinking of my benefit but thinking of that desire in me to study the word is what is going to change my life forever praise god now see that they were uh, severely uh, severely beaten and when and then they were th thrown into prison the jailer was ordered to make sure they didn't escape so the jailer put them into the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in the stocks around midnight paul and silas were praying and singing hymns to god and the other prisoners were listening now isn't it such a good time to praise god such a good time at midnight at midnight is midnight the time all day okay they, they see it says around midnight but the whole day they were praising god they were praying and singing hymns to god now did they ask the question uh, you see it was paul god told paul to go into this place and paul called silas paul said silas let's go together okay and silas since it is the work of god and since paul is asking said okay and they both go into this place now what must silas be asking did you call me here to go into prison and to stop preaching the gospel and paul is saying what it's not my fault it's god's fault god god sent me here i just did not come here because i wanted to it was god what happened if what would have happened if paul said that he would just be like adam eve or or you see uh, adam blamed it on eve eve blamed it on the devil right and if paul would have blamed it on god and said it was because of god because of god that's self centeredness self centeredness see the reason why we are operating in self centeredness without even recognizing it it is because we are, we we are much more governed by what we see around us and that is what is controlling our emotions that was what was controlling 
Adam's emotions. You see, I said Adam blamed Eve. But actually, you see, Adam blamed God because of Eve. He said, the woman you gave. Why? Because of the self-centeredness that had attacked Adam. To think that it was not his fault. He was perfect. He was good. It was whose fault? It was Eve's fault or God's fault. See, the self-centeredness, the spirit of self-centeredness will always lead us to prove ourselves right and to prove others wrong. To prove ourselves right and to prove others wrong. And if this self-centeredness is attacking me, we better need to be careful. We better be careful. Better be careful. Because a person who is self-centered, there is no healing that will come. The, it will look like for one or two days, everything is going good, everything is going great. But no, those who are self-centered will soon, surely run out. That's what happened to the money makers. They were thinking everything's going good, everything's right, everything's calm. They had big hopes of becoming wealthy, being the richest, being the prosper, prospering. But it ran out. Never depend on your ability to achieve something. The money makers were dependent on, uh, the masters were dependent on their strength to achieve something. On, on that girl who was doing it, uh, they, they were all dependent on, see how much money we are going to make. Never depend on yourself to bring something good. See, the more we are going to be dependent on ourselves, the more they will... They, there will be destruction. These masters for one day, two days, it looked good. But once self-centeredness attacked, it all got turned around. For one day or two days, it may look good, it may look fine, it may look perfect. But it will not always remain in that way. And that's why. And that's why. There is a lot of time needed to be spent to understand, am I being self-centered or am I being God-centered? Where's God? So the more I start having my faith in God and having my faith in his word and believing in the word, nothing can stop me. Nothing can stop us. Because of the word which is living, the word which is dwelling on the inside of us. Okay. See that. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the other prisoners were listening. Now, they, trust, they, they trusted in the Lord. They were seeking the Lord. Just like we saw in Psalms 34, 10, those who trust in the Lord lack no good thing. They were trusting in the Lord. They were saying, Lord, you are the highest. They were seeking God. Okay. And they were praying and singing hymns to God. And all the other prisoners, they were listening. Suddenly, there was a massive earthquake. And the prison was shaken to its foundation. All the doors immediately flew open. And the chains of every prisoner fell off. Now, if a door is opening of the prison and a prisoner is inside and the chains are broken, the doors are open, okay, and the whole prison is all open for you, what will the, jail, what will the prisoner do? The jailer is sleeping, the jailer can't see you, what will you do? Escape. Run. But why did all of these other prisoners did not run off? See, the, the Bible very clearly says, and the chains of every prisoner fell off. Then why didn't the prisoners run? Because the whole of the night, they were listening to Paul and Silas. And that glory of God which Paul and Silas were worshipping, that also touched their life. They knew that they, they, they noticed that something was different about Paul and Silas. They were not like the ordinary prisoners. 
there was something different and that's why the glory of god was operating in that prison and that's why the so they these uh, prisoners could recognize that there was something supernatural and that's why they did not escape they stood there they stood still they had every right to escape they had every way out they could run for their life but they did not escape they stayed there inside why because they knew it was something much more different than what they had seen okay and the jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open he assumed assumed okay the prisoners had prisoners had escaped so he drew his sword to kill himself but paul shouted to him stop don't kill yourself we are all here now why was the jailer killing himself anyone know why was the jailer killing himself because he uh, maybe because he did not but no maybe why maybe because he uh, gave up because he, he gave, he gave up. up okay he gave up he could not complete it uh maybe because he was scared of the uh, people who are higher than him because if they had uh, if the prisoners had escaped they they would be really angry at him and might even kill him so he would do it on his own okay very close okay it, the only thing you said wrong nail was they might kill him no they were not might going to kill they were already going to kill him see if it, it was the jailers job to keep the prisoners there now the romans the romans are extremely fierce you know the way why why do you know that the romans are extremely fierce because it was the romans that crucified jesus on the cross and that's the roman type of punishment to put a person on the cross and to kill the person by the cross okay and uh, these romans are extremely fierce violent and if they are not happy with something the person is killed put in jail or killed now here if the jailer if the prisoners or even one prisoner had escaped the, the see the romans are extremely good tormentors they are learned they are very learned in that they are very skilled in that they are very good tormentors now he the jailer is saying if the the officials and the people the authorities and the higher authorities if they come to realize that the prisoners have gone and all of them not only one all of them i will be killed with torment so instead of being killed with torment why don't i just end my life peacefully it was like rip rest in peace why don't i just rest in peace and kill myself and that's what he was saying okay instead of going through all that torment let me just kill myself peacefully but then paul is shouting to him and saying stop don't kill yourself we are all here the jailer called for lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down trembling before paul and silas so even the jailer can see that there is something different about paul and silas what was it it was the supernatural glory of the god the prisoners could see it the jailer could see it, it was the glory of god the supernatural glory of god okay the supernatural power of god and see what he said the jailer called for lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down trembling before paul and silas then he brought them out and asked sirs what must i do to be saved they replied believe in the lord jesus and you will be saved along with everyone in your household and they shared the word of the lord with him and with all who lived in his household even at the hour of the night the jailer cared for them and washed their wounds then he and everyone in his household were immediately baptized now you see paul and silas they did not give a whole lecture for this man jailer you first thing remove all the idols in your house second thing go to your parish church third thing you need to be baptized it was their own choice that they were baptized you see it was the jailer and the household's uh, choice to be baptized Peter, uh, paul and silas did not say you go and baptize yourself right now go to your parish church or go to the nearest church and become a part of the church 
and every Sunday go for mass and, 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 and uh, every day read the Bible. Okay, read uh, one chapter or two chapters of the Bible every single day. He did not reply like that. Paul and Silas did not reply like that. They said, believe, believe in the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved along with everyone in your household. He brought them, verse number 34, he brought them out into his, them into his house and set a meal before them. And he said, and his entire household rejoiced because they all believed in God. The next morning, the city, city officials sent the police to, the, to tell the jailer, let those men go. So the jailer told Paul, the city officials have said, you and Silas are free to leave. Go in peace. Now, first thing, the prisoners recognized that there was something different about Paul and Silas, that it was the glory of God. The jailer realized and his family realized that there was something different about him, okay, that God was with him. Then police came and realized that there was something different about them as well. And then the officials recognized that there was something different about them. Everyone that Paul and Silas met realized that there was something different about them. What was different? God was with them. God was with them. God is with us. God is with you. And when God is with you, who can be against you? When God is with us, who can be against us? Nobody. Nobody. When God is with us, when God is in us, when God is on the inside of us, nobody can be against us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So did you understand that? Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Now see that 37th verse. But Paul replied, they have publicly beaten us without a trial and put us in prison and we are Roman citizens. So now they want us to leave secretly? Certainly not. Let them come themselves to release us. When the police reported this, the city officials were alarmed to learn that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens. So they came to the jail and apologized to them. Then they brought them out and begged them to leave the city. When Paul and Silas left the prison, they returned to the home of Lydia. There they met the believers and encouraged them once more. Then they left the town. Now you see, Paul and Silas, they're going everywhere God told them to go. You know what was in them? The desire of the word of God was in them. The desire to do what God told him, them to do was in them. And because of that desire, everyone around them could realize that there is something different about them and that the glory of God is going with them. And because they could see the glory of God going with Paul and the glory of God going with Silas, because of the glory of God, that was, that was the reason why Paul and Silas had a desire to do what God told them to do. And they were faithful in doing what God told them to do. They were able to walk in that position of being faithful enough and enduring and doing what God had told them to do. Let me ask you a question. And this question is for all of us, including me. Are we actually making that decision to spend the time with the word of God, to seek the kingdom of God and to make God the first priority of our life. And if the answer is yes, then the glory of God will come chasing you. The glory of God will come following you. But if no, then there will be destruction. Yes, God. I think, uh, I'm not sure of the scripture. Um, sorry if I get it wrong, but I think it is Psalms 23, verse number 6. I'm not sure which scripture it is. Praise God. It is, it is the scripture. Okay. Um, let's see it from a KJV also. Uh, 
Bless God. Okay, see that. Surely goodness and mercy. I'll, I'm reading from KJV, okay? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, let me ask you one question. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a fact. Scientists say this fact and this fact is so true. Whenever you walk in the sun, okay, or in some light outside, or let's say outside, okay, when you're walking in the sun, there is something that always follows you. We don't realize it, but the, and it does not irritate us, but it's a fact that something follows you. Anyone knows what it is? A shadow? Your shadow, your very own shadow. Now, when your shadow is going with you, can you say to your shadow, today I am so irritated. You better stay far from me. Stay one no. minute away from me. Don't come to me. Don't you can't come do that. You can't. See what I'll do for you. Not you can't do that. Will the shadow stop coming? Will the shadow say, fine, I will not no. come today? No. No. He is still coming. Okay. Still coming. Still coming. Now, when you were younger, when you were small, how many of you have ever played the game of running away from your shadow? Me. Am I the only one who played that game before? I have also. Ah, okay. At least one person. Okay. When you are playing that game, can you run away from your shadow? No. Okay. Have you ever tried running away from it? Yes. Yeah, but the only time that I thought that I ran away was when I was uh, running in break time. And then it became 12 o'clock, midday. And my, because I could not see my shadow, I thought that I ran away from it successfully. Yeah, praise God. Yes, uh, because uh, that's when the, you know, the, sun... and the shadow is the smallest. It comes straight, straight down. Yeah, yeah, praise God. Uh, w what I tried to do was... Uh, trying to ride a bicycle away from the shadow. Okay, to check whether it's faster. But it will still be there, correct? Yes. Now, with the word of God also, he's saying, surely. What does the word surely mean? Basically, 100%. What does surely mean? Pardon? 100%. 100%, yes. No doubt. No doubt. Favoring. Correct. Now, when surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. What is he saying? Surely. That means wherever you go, whatever you do, whoever you meet, the, sure, the goodness of God, the mercy of God, the unfailing love of God will follow you all the days of your life, of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, does your shadow follow you whenever it wants to follow you? No, no, it follows you all the time. Yeah. Does the shadow follow you when it, uh, when it wants to irritate you? No. no, it follows you all the time. It follows you all the time. In the same way, what is he saying today also? Goodness and mercy shall follow you some of the days of your life. Correct? No, all the days of your life. All the days of your life. The mercy of God is going with you. The love of God is going with you. Goodness of God. With you. Just like how your shadow follows you, the goodness and the mercy of God shall follow you and they will never ever leave you. It will never ever forsake you. Wherever you go, whoever you meet, whatever you do, The mercy and the goodness of God will come chasing you. It will come following you. No matter whether you try to run away from it, no matter when you went to, if, if you want it or not, it will still come following you. It will still come after you. And when you start accepting it and you start walking with it, it will follow you all the days of your life. And because of the goodness and the mercy of God, which is following you all the days of your life, now you will be able to live. You will be able to dwell. You will be able to operate in the house of the Lord. You will be able to live in the house of the Lord. Forever. 
forever. Yes. That word forever mean? He is not only talking when he is saying the word forever. Many times uh, uh, the world, okay, according to the world, the word forever means until your life ends on this earth. But in God's kingdom, when the word forever means, it means it does. From this earth, continuing in heaven. You shall dwell in the Lord. In this earth and also in heaven. So he's saying, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That means, in other words, he's saying, the goodness and the mercy will shall follow you all the days of your life. He's saying, it shall follow you forever. The goodness and the mercy of God are following you forever. So in this earth and in heaven, with God, the mercy of God, the goodness of God, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the unfailing love of God is following us. Praise God. It's, when you're saying the word goodness, you see the word goodness of God, in other words, it means the grace of God. The goodness of God is, the grace of God is, it came from God to us through Jesus. It is grace. It is the goodness of God. And by the grace of God and by mercy. You know that word mercy? In the new covenant, there is another word, another term used for that word mercy. Anyone knows what it is? Salvation? Pardon? Salvation? No. Okay, yeah, something else. Let me just... Another term used for it in the New Covenant, New Testament. Mercy. Anyone? One second, let me just choose. It starts with the A. Anyone? Okay, I'll give you the answer. The word is agape. The word mercy means agape. Do we don't we say the right agape love? In other words, talking about the mercy, the love of mercy. What is mercy? God not giving me what I deserve. What do I deserve? I deserve punishment. I was a sinner. I, I committed sin. I lived in sin and I had a sin nature. And that's why I deserve the word punishment. But God is not giving you what you deserve. So he's saying grace and mercy shall follow you. He's saying grace, God giving you what you don't deserve. Grace means God giving you his strength. God giving you his ability. God giving you the healing. God giving you the salvation. God giving you the blessing. Even though you do, don't deserve. means God giving you what you, do, what you don't deserve. And mercy is God not giving you what you deserve. What do I deserve? I deserve punishment. I deserve the penalty. But God is not giving it to me. Let's say A and B, uh, 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 A is driving a car, okay, and he's sitting next to him. And they're going, and uh, A doesn't see, and B also doesn't see. So what happens is they cross a red light, okay? And there was a police over there just patrolling around, and he saw that, uh, he, he, he saw that, you know, the A and B crossed the red light. So, a, uh, so the police goes after A and B and says, can you come on the side of the road? And the police gave him a fine for crossing a red light. And he pays it. He pays the fine. Okay. But A doesn't pay the fine. B pays the fine. Now, A is saying, I don't have any money to pay. I don't have enough money to pay this fine. And then he's saying, A doesn't have enough money. What B does is B says, okay, I'll pay the fine. And now the fine is paid. Now what will the police give? A receipt. The police will give a receipt. Now you take the receipt, okay? And at the next junction, at the next signal, you stop. And there was a policeman standing on the side of the road on the pathway. And he stops your car and says, you cross the red light back over there, back there in the previous junction. Okay. Now, and he says, pay the fine. Will that person pay the fine again? No, he'll show the receipt so that the police officer knows that he already paid it. Yes. That's what we are doing. Now, we committed sin. 
and we need to pay the price but no matter what we did we could not pay the price so what god did so be also known jesus paid the fine for us yeah now jesus paid the price on our behalf and he gave us a receipt called the word of god called the scriptures and now the devil will try and tell me you have to pay the price for your sin and he will start bringing condemnation and saying you're not good enough you have to pay the fine now what are we, we have to do we have to show him the receipt uh, confess the, the word of god and then he will flee yeah but what we what do we do we think that we have to pay the price again and that's why because we can't pay we think jesus has to pay the price again by the wounds of jesus i will be healed means that jesus will one day come and pay the price again no he has already paid the price for you and that's why now he is saying just show the receipt that i have given to you which is the document that proves that the fine has been paid and now what are we doing we are giving him giving the devil the receipt and saying shut up devil look at your own self first the price has been paid you are trying to tell me to pay the price look at yourself you are such a liar the price has been paid can't you see the receipt so shut up that's what you that's what you need to say to the devil and who is a person who will say that to the devil a person who receives the receipt of the bible and he starts believing in that word of god starts believing in that word and he starts making that word the first priority of his life praise god praise god so did you understand yes are there any questions on this are there any doubts praise god thank you jesus okay so did you understand yes i would like to ask anything no all doubts cleared praise god hallelujah okay Praise God. So, would anyone like to share anything? Praise the Lord. Any testimonies? Rita, Aunty, would you like to say anything or any testimonies you would like to share? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God, Alistair. Yes, I got two testimony. I will share today. Yeah. Um, I got more, but I will share two. because i don't know whether i don't remember much <clears throat> so like there is a two testimonies is like one uh like um, one of my friends she works in the hospital and uh, this uh, she got a news saying it one of the colleague she lost her wallet and uh, in the inside the wallet in uk only so inside the wallet there was all cards bank cards all details everything was there and she came by cab she didn't know where the wallet went like you know she didn't know she checked the area wherever she just move in because she want to start the duty <clears throat> and then the same thing same time uh, because she my friend she just told and called me and say rita this is what it is and i was going in some way i wasn't in the public i was in the public so i couldn't even pray for that person but what i did i prayed by myself and i just gave look for 18 19 the scripture to confess yeah and she was just telling like you know one of her colleague also was doing this uh, scripture when she said this is what it is we have to pray and uh, we can carry on with the like you know we can such whatever it comes so she was just call, uh, praying in uh, like you know saying the scripture look for 18 and 19 uh the same time like she said we just said for 5 minutes and then the person who was next to her she he just uh, like you know trying to track the cab yeah because she, that lady said like you know the the she came only with the taxi like a cab that's it with the uber and then they try to track her, track him everything and then at the, uh, like you know he said the phone is with me the car sorry the wallet is with me and 
uh, in half an hour, within half an hour, that person came back because he was far. But, you know, by grace of God and with the like prayer, uh, he came back, he gave the wallet, everything was, the money was there, uh, whatever it was there, the value, valuable things was there, she found it. So all glory to God. This is from the long time. <laughs> long time means half an hour, like, you know, maybe two months before this miracle was. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. So she received everything, yes. And the second thing is like, you know, uh, I was just worried about like, uh, not worried, like, you know, I know that Jesus is our provider, but I was just telling Jesus that, uh, but the thing is like before previous, uh, um, previous testimony, I want to tell like, you know, even uh, I <clears throat> personally, I didn't pray with her because sometimes what's happened, we want anyone to pray with us, right? But in certain time, I learned the Holy Spirit taught me like, you know, when you don't even reach to that person, like, you know, in, in spiritually, like, you know, in talking, even verbally, but, you know, if you just uh, speak by yourself, the word of God and the Holy Spirit is doing the work and just you have to believe on the scripture. So, you know, and it's done by grace of God. So that what it is, he taught me like in their days. And I said, praise Jesus. And by the time half an hour, she just texted me saying, we already got that wallet. Praise Jesus. And the second testimony was like, you know, the fair in December, it was nearly like a going for vacation. It's nearly 1,000 pounds. Yeah, it is more than yeah. one. Uh, but, you know, I just says, uh, uh, like, you know, Jesus is a provider and he will give me a cheapest uh, cheapest uh, fare. And we yeah. came in agreement. We did the agreement when we are praying. And I, and Sunday, last two weeks, two weeks before, yes. Yeah, not last Sunday, this Sunday, last Sunday, uh, we I just like, you know, when the Holy Communion was raising up, I said, Jesus, I know that you will, you have blessed me with the cheapest flight. And the same day, we like evening, we just, my husband was sitting and checking the tickets. So, you know, we was doing the tickets and praise God, we got the tickets instead of 1000 pounds is like a one like Indian money. We got like less than 70 thousand so 700 pounds less than 700 pounds so praise god all glory to god so it was amazing you know uh, we won't get it offer and if the price will go higher than that so all glory to god almighty so he never leaves us for like you know he always know what time and when to give because my husband also says if you are not coming like to like you know to check I will just end up just watching the tickets and I will end off the laptop, okay? But only he said to me, because you came and then uh, we went for, we went through like, you know, we, we went through to get the tickets. And the next day when I saw the fair, it was raised. So all glory to God, so praise Jesus. And we got to choose the, the, uh, the food, what we want to order online, I mean, on the flight, as well as the seats, like, you know, it's the ex near the exit seat, so you can relax at the back, so nobody can kick you, because sometimes in a flight, you know, the children or whoever, they just want to push and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, but we got a, like, you know, a special offer, like I can say, like we can get a, is the, is the, the because there is a fly, uh, seats, you have to pay. Yeah, and certain seats you don't have to pay. Okay, we yeah. got the uh, tickets, uh, the, uh, the seats also free. And like, you know, it's like there is more space at the back and we can just stand up where there's the exit seat is. So, you know, not in front, but in the middle row. So, you know, it's a perfect seat what God has blessed us. And even the seats are free because certain, uh, uh, seats we have to pay. It's like uh, 13 pounds. Uh, some fly, some uh, uh, yeah. the seats was five pounds. So you know, uh, all glory to God. So everything goes free, like you know, in the the food, and we choose what we really needed. So praise yes. Jesus. I think yes, Sean God. want to do something. He have something. Praise Jesus. <coughs> yes, exactly Sean. what we studied. Those who don't know the Lord lack no good thing. I don't Amen. have any like uh, but, uh, the testimony is not related to what you said, or not yes. so much related to the topic. But I have a testimony for you for yes. my testimony. So yeah, uh, I like in twenty fifteen or twenty fourteen, like that. I mean twenty fifteen or twenty sixteen. Yeah, twenty sixteen. I had adenoids, like, uh, and I had to go for a surgery. Okay. So my whole family were was. Like, 
uh, frame for me because we we were in Dubai, so we before we were joining uh, JCIM like that three four years before we were joining JCIM right now. So they do not know much of the world, so they just went to mass and played. That's all. So like that, and then uh, it's like another. It was another like five six days or so, and. Uh, like well, it took ten hours for the surgery to finish, but I, in the hospital I was admitted to like for a week or so. Bad night. Can you repeat the last lecture? So I was admitted in the hospital for a week or so for for adenoids. Okay, and then you got discharged. Yeah. Yeah, praise God, and you were healed. Yeah. Praise God. God. Wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Amazing, Sean. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Okay, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Alistair, can I share one more testimony? I got. Yes. I just remember. Praise God. Yes, go ahead. Go no, ahead. because you don't get a time for the uh, another class. Yeah, there is another class, right? Yeah, yeah. I still have like uh, 20, 20 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Twenty-three minutes. So, Twenty-three. Yeah. Yes. Like one of the uh, like you know go from Goa. They they are with my in my prayer from long time ago. Uh, but you know. He had some depression. The son, he the second, he, she got a three son, and the second one, she he was suffering from a depression. That how the case came to me, and then like you know because her mom is working, dad is working, so you know they want to do it. Uh, they want to send him in the rehab center. Yeah, so it was not in Goa. They sent it in uh, Mangalore. So over there, uh, they wasn't giving to answer the call for his parents, like, you know, they wasn't letting him to answer the call or like, you know, or they was not giving the phone. So he thought like, you know, my mom and dad don't love me. Do you understand? And yeah. he was to suicide, would he have to do the suicide? So what he did, he jumped from the second floor and praise God, all glory to God. He didn't, it doesn't have harm him, but you know, his vertebra was damaged. Okay. And then they called his mom and says, like, you know, this is what happened. So they went from Goa to uh, Peglo to take him in the hospital. They did the treatment. And just before the surgery, her mom calls me and says, like, you know, oh, now, like, you know, I called them and I called her mom. The phone was not, I couldn't even hear properly because the echoing and like, you know, the uh, the network over there. I have to leave the, the hospital. Okay. Yes. And then uh, I just prayed. I did a voice message and I sent him because I don't know what it is really going on, but I know the Holy Spirit knows what's really he needed because I couldn't hardly hear her mom, what she was telling me. And then, uh, you know, she then after that, after doing the prayer, she sent me the, uh, like, you know, voice message saying what happened to her son and all. But praise God, uh, like, you know, they have to put more implant for the vertebra. By the grace of God, he only had a five implant and praise God, the uh, operation surgery was successful. Then they asked for the prayer too, because they want to fly by air, like plane. So, you know, so they was success to go. And then after that, I just called her mom just to, I want to talk to him. His name is Ben. So I just called him. I just prayed on him. I like, I just told him to confess the scripture. He was quiet that time. Yeah. But you know, her mom keep on saying the scripture, one uh, like, you know, 1 Peter 2, 24, as well as I am the body of Christ and I got a mind of Christ. So just I told him to repeat these two words uh, yeah. of the scriptures. And then, like, you know, uh, the, that day I got a message saying her mom, because now, because he couldn't, because he got a little bit pain, I rebuked the pain and I just told him to confess. I told him to listen the word of God. Uh, I signed some script, like, you know, the, the clips, and then I took the uh, and I the teaching clips and I just told him like you know to confess and then her mom said uh, last week she sent me the message saying it he's doing well now he's in more in prayer he's going out like you know the joy of the Lord came on him like you know it's like he was depressed he couldn't do much you know every time he thinks like you know everybody abandoned him and all this kind of but the day we prayed. With the power of Holy Spirit, he changed himself, so he's doing well. And I just told him last time, like, you know, to go to attend Papa's uh, retreat, but he couldn't, she couldn't do it because she's working in the bank. So she's told me, but now I go, yesterday only we got another 
uh, another retreat uh, flyer saying it it's going to be in this month i am next month so you know i will send her back praise god so we believe that he's totally set free in jesus name amen praise god amen thank you jesus praise god yes wonderful testimony thank you praise god and for my surgery elston when i just asked for the holiday yeah, because normally when you had a surgery it was like only uh, six weeks by grace of god i went back to start work but i couldn't do it and then uh, the doctor gave me uh, i spoken to your dad that time because i was feeling low and all then we came in agreement and then you know i it, within we, with with your mom as well because i called your dad as well as mom so whoever i get connected but they both called me and we was in agreement that they uh like you know the doctor gp everything will be go smooth and it will done by grace of god everything will be my favor and praise god it was uh done instead of giving six week holiday they gave me eight week holiday and doctor said at the end uh like you know we can't i can't extend you more this is what normally we give for this surgery only six weeks but by like you know but we are offering you another two weeks Thanks so god. it's not it's not from his word he do, he couldn't do it he couldn't extend actually because he told me saying like you know only for this surgery we are give, giving only six weeks but uh like you know um he didn't say but i know by grace of god this another two weeks is the grace of god and the prayer we did it we come in agreement with your mom and dad so i got received that extra holiday praise god all glory to god thank you jesus yes praise praise god. amazing thank you jesus thank you jesus Hallelujah. yes celestine we can do the ending prayer and then praise. if anybody wants to give the testimony is that will fine or yeah anyone else praise god Okay, thank you, Jesus. Uh, praise God. Uh, today we pray for those with the skin disease. Okay, praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Lord, as you have given us the authority, O Lord, to speak, I am speaking to every issue person or every person, O Lord, in this world who has the skin disease, Lord. who is suffering with skin disease or suffering with any type of disease to do with the skin i uproot it i curse it i cast that spirit out of their life in the name of jesus never again to return into their life lord i just thought that they are completely healed and that they are restored and that the life of god is flowing into them and that their skin is healthy their skin is prosperous their skin is like brand new in jesus name and lord their skin is washed with the blood of jesus and that lord they are able to see the manifestation and lord that they are able to see their skin brand new okay smooth and soft oh lord jesus thank you lord thank you holy spirit thank you above father lord we have spoken it and lord we believe that whatever we have spoken we have received it and the skin is perfectly perfect in jesus name thank you lord in jesus name we pray our father amen 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 praise god okay uh, we close with the ending prayer thank you jesus thank you lord thank you our father thank you jesus thank you holy spirit thank you lord for this wonderful day that you have given us thank you lord for teaching us your word oh lord lord your word works practically oh lord And Lord, as we have received a practical understanding of those who trust in the Lord, they lack no good thing. Lord, we make the decision, even though we don't have any physical evidence, to trust you, to keep our focus on you, to trust in you, to focus on you, to meditate on your word for us, O oh Lord. Lord, you have given to us the promise. You have given to us the scripture. You have given to us the evidence. And Lord, we believe your word. Lord, we make the decision to believe the truth. And Lord, we make the decision to walk in the word, to believe. that word and to live according to that word walking in the supernatural realm in the spiritual realm according to your word oh lord thank you lord thank you jesus for this teaching lord that you have taught us oh lord and lord we believe that it is the holy spirit who's our guide who's our leader who's our speaker who's our who's our teacher and that he is the one who's teaching us and that he is the one who spoke to us and any word that we have heard today unknowingly that is contradicting to the word we uproot it we curse it and we cast it out of our life in the name of jesus and whatever word we have heard lord we believe it is of you and of your word and that you 
your word is benefiting our lives and your word is changing our life and your word is transforming our life completely from the old self to the new self from the old form to the new form to a place where we are able to live according to the word of god walking in the fullness of god oh lord thank you lord in jesus name we pray our father amen amen amen